code recording. So we're going to do a cat object, so we're doing a cat parent. Uh, turn on snaps with S if, it, if you want, so you can snap to the center, and just click and drag. Make sure you click and drag for a while, because if you just click, it'll just make something, but it won't, you won't see it. So click and drag. The size doesn't matter that much, but like something around like where it, it, it almost envelops the character that usually is a pretty good size. Okay, and once you're done with that, we can move to the modify panel. Because we don't need the we don't need the the what do you call it? The create anymore. So now I need to prep my model for rigging. Um, so I just need to do again if you remember from last week, ideally I make it transparent, so Alt X be transparent. And I might want to freeze it. So in the left hand panel, right click on it, and you can freeze selection. So right click freeze selection, and now it's frozen, and I can't select it, which is gonna be perfect for me to animate with. If I'm going too fast, just let me know. I'm just gonna scale down the character a little bit. So you kinda of want it something like that. Where it's around like the the, the foot footprint of the uh, character. How do you get that sign out of you? All right, so uh, once you have that, we need to do create pelvis. If you remember from last week, the pelvis is like the main kind of like uh, part of the of the body. Everything comes from the pelvis. Everything comes from the pelvis. So it's like the main hub um, that will like parent to everything else. So what I want to do with the pelvis is I want to like scale it so it sort of fits the pelvis of my character. The edges of the box, like the sides of the box here, that's where my legs are gonna uh, appear from. So I'm gonna like extend the edges of the box to where I believe uh, the leg hip joint should be. Okay. Kind of like that. That's because that's where I think the leg will rotate from. So I send it to me. The size of the hip um, will denote like how much of an area. So if you remember from last week this will have like kind of an area around this so it'll grab stuff around there but don't worry we'll fix it later if it grabs the wrong stuff just make sure it's centered ideally look at it from the side and make sure it's centered because that's where the center of this face this this uh this like square that's where it's going to generate a leg from and that's where the leg is going to rotate around so if for example i like put it here my leg is going to rotate from here which is not what i want because my joint, my leg joint is here. Okay. I'm just gonna pause there for a sec. Let's take some time getting the pelvis right, because once you get the pelvis right, we'll see. Uh, once you have created a pelvis, like the, the, you can just hide the character. Using the little eye panel, just hide that because you don't need to. You don't need to see it, and you don't want to accidentally select it. Just a bit that we want to pay, pay a bit of attention to. So from the hub, everything's going to be created from the hub. Okay. Um, so the it's called the it's called create pelvis, but they'll call it hub. So a hub is like a central point, and on a hub you can create all of these types of stuff, like legs, spines, bones, arm, tail. And you can add like generic rigging. From a bone, if we create a bone, which we saw last uh, last week, a bone usually only creates another bone, but hubs can create special things. Um, and all, all a leg is, is just a set of bones that have been preset to define its like um, IK. So it knows that it has a joint, it knows that it has an ankle. They're all just bones, but Cat has them preset so you can use them. So let me add a leg. So maybe just watch this. So because I, I set up the, the face to be here, hopefully the leg should appear from here. Oop, so that's correct. It's obviously huge and not in the right place, but I'll, I'll deal with that for a sec. Just add one leg at a time. So what I'll do is I want to move, this is the leg platform. 
So that's where the leg aims. So again, as I said, it's all preset. So you don't have to build this from scratch. So I'm going to put that platform like where it is, kind of under the foot. And also be aware that this is not a foot. This is an ankle, which is really annoying. Uh, when I scale, I might want to scale locally just to make sure it's aligned to the ankle. So I'm going to make the ankle like kind of short and small. And I extend it a bit because the ankle is one of the important like control points. You see the way like when I move it, like it moves. Um, it should move everything else as well when it's, once it's set up. So the ankle is an important control point. So I extend it a bit. So when I'm animating, I can select it easier. Um, so I'm going to put the ankle here where the ankle is. And you always work with any of the cap limbs. So like uh, arms or tails or whatever. You always work outside in. So like I'm going from the furthest most and then I'm going inwards. So now when I have this set up, I'll bring the lower knee like here. So I kind of scale it so it sort of fits the, the area. Maybe I'll move the platform a little bit. So it's, and I can, then I'll go to the top bone. And I can slowly like aim in. What I also want to do is give it a tiny bend forwards. A tiny tiny bend forward so it knows that this is the way that it's bending. I'll scale the top one down because I have a really skinny top leg. And I can I can still move it. Like even if I didn't put the pelvis in the perfect position, it's okay. I can still move it here. Um, and I'm trying to get get it so it's like centered where the knee is, you know? So like right here is where it's gonna rotate. So I'll try and center it there. And I wanna make sure that it's aiming to So I'm going to take some time making sure all the all the pivot points are in the right position because once it's locked in, it's locked in. I won't be able to change it very easily. Okay, so I have this leg. There's a couple of more things I need to do. Uh, first thing is, on the ankle, I want to add a bone. And this bone will be my foot. So I can, I can call that foot. Uh, that is left foot. So L foot. And then I'll just move that. That's that's like childhood to the ankle. So wherever the ankle goes, that foot goes. Okay, that bone goes, which is correct. That's what I want from a foot. But I just need to set that foot in the right position. So that's where the foot's going to rotate around. And remember, that's I want the foot to rotate like around this point. I need to make sure it rotates correctly around that point. So that's where I want the foot to rotate. So that's my foot. It doesn't need to exactly be in the shape of the mesh. Um, so that's one thing I need to make the foot. The second thing I need to do, if I go back to any of the upper limbs, so like the thigh or the calf, I can do something called an up node. And let me click up node. You get like a little cross that you need to move out forwards. And what the up node does, you see the way like it controls where the knee bends. So if I want the, if I want the leg to like, rotate in different directions i can use an up node to control it so i can rotate it over here or over here so i just want to make sure that up node is rotated so it's facing the correct way um and that's fine it doesn't matter if it's offset it's okay as long as it's like the the, the leg is facing correct once i've done all of that if i go back to the hub and just click add leg again it copies exactly to the other side so be so if you take your time on the first one um, it'll be sorted for the next, for, for the, the other leg. Oh, the foot? Yeah, yeah you yeah. click on the ankle and then you add bone. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And we pause. Okay, so we should all be good up to here, right? So I'm going to go back to the hub. And again, this is where everything comes from. So from the hub, I'm going to add a spine. Now what the spine will do, let me add it, it's going to give me another hub. Uh, be careful, this is not a head. So if I like uh, rotate this, you'll kind of see what it should do in animation. So it reacts like a spine does. So again, you don't need to set it up. You don't need to individually build bones and set up a spine. It automatically sets it up so it moves like a spine. You can see the back is like moving like a backbone. Um, <clears throat> If I click on any of the bones here, I can tell it how many bones to have. So let's say if I want a very, very simple character, I can do like two bones, for example. It'll still react the same, but it's only going to use two bones. If I want a much more complex character, 
I can go up to like 10 or whatever. Um, oh, shit. Lol. I think I fucked up. Um, but what you don't want to do... Lol, it's gone, it's gone, it's gone. Forget about it, it's gone. What you don't want to do is, um, is have too many because it actually becomes like kind of productive at that stage. Because like these, there's, there's five here, but they kind of react pretty well. Like I don't think I really need any more than, than this five. Um, so they're fine. Uh, don't do what I did, which is reduce and then increase. Just like change the number and that, like once. So what I'm going to do with this, this will be the chest. This is not going to be um, the, 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 the head, all right? So this will be the, actually the chest area. And I'm just going to like space it so it's the right place. I can uh, I can move the spine. I need to move them all actually together, sorry. Um, and it's, it's really awkward, which is why the, what you call it, the, the hip ideally needs to be in the right place. I'm also going to scale them. So ideally, they'll take more or less the area that the, I want them to affect. It's so like I'm trying to scale them so they fit more or less the area. And there's a few tweaks I'm going to have to do, but it's fine. For now, this should be good, right? So again, if I rotate this, it rotates backwards and forwards, and you can see how it would react how I would want it to. Right? So like you can imagine that's like the torso moving and bending, and that's exactly kind of what I want. Okay, so once I've finished that, I'm going to add another spine, just another one. Um, because this is another hub, where every time I create a spine, it creates another hub. Okay, that's the end of the spine. You see it says hub 002, which means I can continue adding like arms, legs, tails, blah, blah, blah. So if I had a horse, for example, I would have to tell this in and forwards. I would create a spine, and then there would be another hub. And on that hub, I could create like another arm or another leg. In this case, um, don't worry about the arms yet. I'll deal with that later. I'm just going to add one more spine, and this will be my head. I'll probably have very few bones. Like here, I'll be like two bones because my neck is so small. I don't really need it to do anything. Um, and this is going to be my head. So I'm going to rename that to head. And let's scale that so it fits the head. And I'll scale the uh, the spine as well. Let me just move that in position. Scale these spines down because they don't need to be that big. That's pretty good. Um, and then, like, it depends on what I want. Like, if I have eye, um, eyelids and stuff like that, I can add them in as bones. Um, if I'm using a morph, we haven't looked at morphs yet. Morphs are, like, just literally, like, deforming them, but using animation to deform them. We haven't looked at that. Um, but you see, like, it has a jaw. If I go back to the Iron Giant, there's, like, a jaw piece here. That little jaw piece. So I'd like this piece to be able to move, right? So it's like a one draw, and I want it to hinge here. So let me go back to the head. So what I can do from the head is create a bone. And there is the bone. Again, if I can't see it here, I might have to use the, the left panel to find it. I'm going to call it camera draw. Angle it so it's the angle of the draw. Make sure the pivot point is like where I want the jaw to rotate from. And I can like scale it out. Okay. So basically like when this is rigged, I should be able to move this and uh, the jaw will follow the motion, you know? So I should be able to make it tall, basically. Okay. Uh, I'd say get up to that point and we'll do the arm because the arm's like a whole process. Uh, that main hub, now it's the arm. So similar to the leg, once we do one arm, we can uh, we can deal with um, the other arm just by copying, like by, by adding another one, it'll copy. But it's going to take a little more work here. So I'm going to add arm. It is a bit of a pain. So again, I want to work from the out in. I'm going to change my rotation to local. This is a palm and it comes in like that, like facing downwards. Okay. So it's, it's, this is a bit stupid. The palm faces downwards. You don't know that, but just know that, um, like you can't tell. Uh, I'm also going to turn on 
with a angle snap. So when I rotate, it rotates in like five degree angles. So I can get like an exact angle. So I'm going to get the, oops, sorry. I want to put it where the wrist should be. It's going to be in here. I'm going to scale it. So it cuts. Okay. That's pretty good. Then I'll move in the forearm. Again, remember to give it a little bit of a bend. So like I want my elbow to be here. So I want a little bit of a bend that way. Scale this down. And then I can move my collarbone to like where it should be. Since I'm going to go, okay. Let's make sure that it's rotated. And as well. Um, and you'll see that there also is an up node here. Like on, if I select any of these, the up node here is a bit weirder, okay. So if I click an up node, it creates a cross again, but it's not real time. So it's not the same as um, the knee up node. So this only happens when I'm animating. But basically I can move that here, and then when I move the arm, it'll you see the way it's rotated and facing the up node, but I have to do a motion face. It's a bit stupid. I don't know why it's up there. Um, so they won't they won't do it now, they'll only do it during the animation. Okay. Once I have this, you don't have to do this. So I'm just telling you, you don't have to do this, but I'm going to show you how to make the digits, just so you know. Um, for today, if you just want to have the, the arm, that's fine. Um, oh, yeah, so you see like the way it's aiming towards the up node? The arm is always aiming towards the up node, but it doesn't change when I move it. It only changes when I when I actually add it again. Okay. So it doesn't change in real time. So if I want digits, I'm going to go to the palm, and there it says number of digits. When you put in the number of digits, one of them will always be the thumb, always. Um, so let's say if you want something that has no thumb and has like, I don't know, like, like two things like that, you would put in three and then this digit will come and you have the digits. So it, al it always adds one of them as a thumb. Um, in this case, I can do a number of things. I can do like four digits, so that'll give me a thumb and three digits. Or I can do two, so I can have a thumb and then just like a mitten for all three of them, um, which is probably what I'm going to do. So I'm going to do two digits and sometimes they come in like really dumb and long. Um, for each of the digits, if you select them, it can show you how many bones are in the digit. So three is the usual because we have three, like one, two, three. So we can do a curve like that. Um, in this case, I only have two because like each of them only has two. You see that? So for each of these, I can do like bones to, same with this one, bones to, if I double click, It'll select all of them, and I can scale them down locally, which is a little bit stupid, but I have to do it. So I don't quite know why they work like that. Okay. Um, and then I need to move it into position. To move them, be careful. You have to select both of them to move them. Okay, so let me show you what happens if you select just one. Hold on, let me scale this one down. So that's correct. But let's say I wanted to move this slightly. If I move that, you know, they don't come together. Same as the bottom one, they don't come together. So if I want to move both of them, uh, sorry, if I want to move them together, I need to like select both of them. Annoyingly, to rotate, I want to rotate the base. So if I want to rotate, I don't want to rotate both of them. See, rotating both of them does this, which is great for animation, because the animation, I can just do that, and that's like tension with this. But if I want to like rotate the angle, like for example, I should rotate only the base. So it's really stupid. But rotation, only rotate the base. Moving, select both to move them. Okay, it's just a dumb note. Um, and then once I'm done, this is done. Again, go back to the hub, add an arm, and I have a full arm. Um, so yeah, unfreeze it, make it not transparent, and I'm going to put on the skin. And add the bones. 
So this is a little different than before. Because we have so many bones now, we can add all of them. But also there are some bones that maybe I don't want to add. So for example, uh, let me see. Let me see down here. Maybe I don't really want the ankle because I have, um, I have the calf bone already and I have the foot bone. The ankle isn't really doing anything here in this case. So I maybe don't want to add the ankle. Uh, like up here I have a collarbone. This little collarbone here. I don't know. I, I could add it, but maybe I don't want to. So if you don't want to, and this you kind of only notice over time, you can just like remove them from there. So like ankle, let me see the other ankle. Yeah. So I've just like literally control click will remove them. So they're not being uh, detected. Um, collarbone as well, for example, let's see, collarbone, here. Oh, we can try. I don't think it'll do much. So, select. So it's going to link to all these bones, right? And let me just do a real quick test. So if you remember from last week, select any of the cat rig bones, any of them, doesn't matter. Click and hold ABS to make an animation layer. Make sure you're not selecting this. Select this layer. Turn on animation. Um, I don't need to auto key yet. Actually, I will. I will set a key though. I'm going to double click the pelvis. So every time you double click in Max, it, it selects all the children, right? So if I double click here, it selects all the children. If so, if I double click the pelvis, it selects all the children, which is literally the entire animation. And I want to set a key. And I'm going to set a key at frame zero. This is my default reference pose. So again, if you remember from animation, uh, sorry, from games, if it bugs and the animation bugs, it goes to like default key pose. That's basically what I'm doing. So if I screw up any animations, I always have my default pose to go back to. Um, so now I can test. And look, you can see like it's animating. Uh, you see the way the up node is here. So it's trying to follow the up node. And um, what I can do, let me grab these. The elbow up nodes pull them back and you see the way like if I move it's trying to follow the elbow up node and if I move the elbow up node to the side it tries to follow as well oops sorry there and like it's aiming towards the up node see uh, do those ah. no, I will I will actually um, let me just yeah let's do it that's actually one of the things, I, I, now I'm going to turn on autokey. One of the things I do want to do is make a really stupid pose. And the reason I want the really dumb pose is I want to see if I do like really um, exaggerated motions, I want to see where there's problems. Um, so again, double click. I'm just making sure I'm setting a key at frame zero so I have my default pose. And now I can do my dumb pose. So let's move this here. Make it really sassy. Let's do really sassy. So let's cut the hip. Bring it down. Well, like you want sassy, right? So you always generally start from your like. You generally start from your uh, pelvis. I get the the pelvis in the right position. Oh my god, it's kind of annoying. See the way the spine's reacting like that? So that's kind of what I wanted. This one left. Let's do like a little. Uh, this one I want to rotate by view. Rotate that way. And then the up nodes will control which angle the beam is facing. Uh, well, you want it sassy, so <laughs> yeah, let me rotate it forwards a bit as well. Yeah. 
Uh, so yeah, like double click the pelvis and then click set key, the, the little key. I know, right? Okay, uh, so it looks okay, but I'm sure there's going to be problems. So what I can do is, again, I'll double click the pelvis to select all the, the cat rig bones, and I'm going to make them transparent now, so I can see where there's like mesh problems. All right, so you can see here, oops, sorry, see there's a squash here. I'm just going to change the orthographic so I can zoom in. You can see that squash, it's not what I want. Uh, you. Um, and then let me just see if these work. So they work okay. Yeah, they work pretty good. Just checking the thumb works. What's the thumb bone? Let's see. Oh, I'm gonna freeze the argument system. Uh, okay, see that? It's not following fully. So, like, the bone is moving, but the thumb isn't fully following. So that's a problem as well, and I know that's happening on both sides. Let's check the foot. Yeah, that's a problem as well. So it's kind of grabbing the leg when I don't want it to. Um, and then the jaw is definitely not going to work. So, see, it's moving the entire body. So I wanted the jaw to only move the jaw. And the same with the head. The head's moving like the upper bit of the chest. Because it doesn't really know what part of your mesh is uh, huh? its jaw or the body or whatever it is. It doesn't really know. So we need to define that. So I usually do like a really dumb pose that I'll delete later. So this is the original pose. Um, and then, so like I, I have this, you know, to start off with. And a really dumb pose all on like the same frame. So I can like completely get like if I, w once I fix this, I would just like select that and just hit delete. It will be gone. Okay. Um, but now I need to fix this. So let me go back to the Iron Giant, unfreeze it, and let me check my skin. So here is something we haven't done. So far, all we did was just we put the, 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 the bones there, and we accepted whatever it decided. But we can also edit. So if I edit, you can see there's that heat map. So for example, this foot, that's what it's editing. It's uh, Sorry, what it's grabbing. It's grabbing... Red is the hottest, it's like a heat map, so it's like the most linked to that bone. Yellow is slightly less linked. There's also blue that's like very lightly linked. Okay, so I can edit envelopes here. Um, and again, there's multiple ways to edit envelopes. Um, I can like grab this. You see the way like, if I increase the envelope, it starts grabbing more and more. So I can do that. I can do it that way. It's not very accurate, but I can do that. Um, I can also do a, there is a paint here. So paint weights, I don't like it that much, but you can paint and like wherever you paint on starts to get um, added to that bone, but it's not super accurate. What I prefer, and let me do, I need to turn on vertices here so I can select vertices. And then I use this little weight tool and it shows up like this. So this is going to be a little complicated, but um, or it seems complicated, but it's not that complex. So what this does for this bone specifically, so I'm selecting like, um, which bone is this? The ankle bone, right? Oh no, I don't want the ankle bone. I want, uh, oh no, that is the foot. I just forgot to rename it. So that is uh, the foot. I can select vertices like that, literally because I turned on that I could select vertices up here. So I can select individual vertices or I can do it by select element. So when I click, it selects the entire elements connected. Now, if I had a mesh that was in separate pieces, um, it, if I click select element, it's going to select everything. But because I have my mesh as a robot, because I wanted to make it easier for you at the start, they're all in actual different individual elements. So select element will work. So if I select element here, if I hit one, there's zero and there's one here. So zero is like not at all linked to this bone. One is 100% linked to this bone. So if I click one, now the foot is fully linked to the bone. I can animate and see, like you see the way it's exactly going where the bones, um, yeah, where the bones moving. On the flip side, uh, if I want to select inverse, I can do a control I will select the inverse of what I'm selecting. Um, or I can just like literally just click that element as well. And I hit that zero. Now this part should not be affected at all. 
and now it's not affected at all okay and you can like control how much it is affected so for example if i want to do like 0.1 it is now going to be slightly affected by the foot but not that much um and basically what i need to do is go up through all the bones and make sure they're following the the, the bone that i want them to be following right there's a few other things you can do here. So for example, if I click just one vertex, let me turn off select element. If I select one vertex, you can like grow and it expands the selection. Uh, you can do like a ring, which goes like around and a loop goes around the other way. See like that all the way around. Um, and this is useful for like, if I have an arm, for example, I can grab a loop and I can like expand it. And like control how much the bone selects based on that. So I'm just gonna do just this leg. I'll show you. Uh, let me turn on select element again. So I want this bone. Oh, you see, like I'm not selecting the bone. I'm selecting just like this tiny, long line that represents the bone. So if I click on that, uh, or I can also select it in here. Same thing. I can select it in here as well. So I'm selecting that that long bone. Set that to one, and then here. I have a little ball joint, right? And that, that ball joint is, ideally I want to share between the thigh and the calf. So I'm going to set that 100% to the, to the thigh, then I'm going to go to the calf, and I'm going to set it 50% to the calf. A bone can only have a maximum of 100%, like only one. If I set it 100% to one and then set it 50% to the other, it takes away 50% from the original bone to, add, to give it to the new bone. Does that make sense? It like shares it. So if I check back on the original, it is like 50% to the original. You see it here as well, 0.5 to the other. So I can set it back to one again. If I go back to this and I set it to like 0.25. Now it's 0.75 to this one and 0.25 to the bottom. All right, so it always shares, it always has to add up to one. And they always have to be rigged to something. You can never have a vertex that's not rigged to anything. So sometimes if I click on a vertex, and I can't set it to zero, it refuses to go to zero, it's because it needs to be rigged to something. Uh, and you always have to have it uh, aligned. So that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Let's test that leg. And we can see, actually, let me do like a, a dumber animation so it's more obvious. So number five, auto key is on. Okay, so and that one. So you can see on this leg, the upper, the upper leg is squash. Uh, I know it's a bit hard to see. I'm just gonna hide the, uh, the camera for now. See the upper leg gets squashed and stretched because it's trying to follow the upper bone as well as the middle bone, whereas this leg stays the same. And then the the, the ball joint does get squashed because it's working between the two uh, bones. Okay, does that kind of make sense? Okay. The final thing to know, when I'm animate, when I'm uh, sorry, editing these weightings, I want to pick one side of the body. Doesn't matter which side, as long as my um, model is symmetrical. If I pick one side, I can copy everything from that side over to the other, so I don't need to do it all over again. So I'm going to do it for the for I started on the right, so I'm going to do the right leg and then the right arm, and I'll deal with that, and then I'll, I'll be able to copy it over later. Um, so let me just do the head just again to get you used to this. So I'm on the head. Edit envelopes is on. I'm selecting vertices. I'm selecting by element. Select the entire head. And I'm going to rig that entire thing to the head bone. I'm going to make the head not affect the chest at all. Oh, it's affecting a little. You see there's a tiny blue here. Don't want it to affect that at all. And then I need to find my jaw bone. I think that's it. Yeah, jaw. Um, hundred percent affect this jaw piece. And does that work now? Yeah, it does. You can see it opening. Let me make it more obvious. Nothing. Again, I don't care. I'm doing a really dumb animation just to test. So who cares? So that works. Uh, it's still affecting the chest. So I need to fix that. Edit envelopes. I want the jaw, uh, control I, just uh, inverse. So, so now the jaw is opening. Great. The jaw opens, but you see it doesn't affect anything else. 
um, and that's working perfectly as intended. Um, let me just really quick go through all the rest of the phones because it's pretty easy. I'm just setting like setting them essentially one to everything. That's one. The palm is a bit of a pain. So the palm will take this as one. And I want the palm not to affect it, all of these fingers. Zero. Oh. Zero. Cool. And you see that one refuses to go to zero? Oh wait, this goes out of Yeah, this one. Okay. Um this bone's here. I want you to select this to one. This bone is this to one. And you see they kind of snap into position correctly. Same with this one. All these three keys. One. Don't select any of these. And that's perfect. So that's if I have a look at the at the oops, sorry. If I have a look at the hand, that is now animating like the fingers are animating correctly. Good stuff. Okay, so I've done all of it, right? Like pretty much one entire half. I did like the whole arm, the whole leg, uh, the chest I'm going to leave for now. So if I go back to the modifier panel and to the skin, you see there's a mirror mode. So if I click add the envelopes again, turn on mirror mode. So I was working on the right hand side, which is the blue side, um, and the other side's green. So you can hover over this and it says like paste green to blue or paste blue to green. Uh, so I want to paste the blue to the green vertices. So let's paste. Fingers crossed. This works. And you see like this was squashing before. And it's not anymore. And I can check that by going to the added envelopes again. Uh, let's check this bone. Perfect. So they just literally replicated each other. Alright. So I just paste it from the, the one side to the other. So it doesn't matter which side you do. As long as you do one side, you can know. Any questions on this so far? We good? Okay. Let's go for last break. And when we come back, let's try and rig the whole thing. Okay, so that's working. And you can... Um, and then the legs, I generally don't need to move. And that is a very, very simple idea. And you can see that in the game. I probably will make the arms swing a little bit more. Uh, but that's a really simple idea. Okay? So let me pause that, um, and let's say that's done. Again, make sure I lock it there. So frame one to hundred, and usually I would write this down somewhere. So I would have like a separate, um, just a text file that I would know where each animation lives. So I know one to hundred is the idol. So let me do a walk. So I'm going to start at like one one to, let's say one thirty. I can just like press play to see how fast it is. Uh, yeah, it's probably okay. And if it's too slow or too fast, I can rescale it later. So for this, again, let me lock it. And I want to do, um, actually, let me let me just copy from the reference pose. Zero. I'm just going to copy from reference pose zero to So I'm starting from scratch. Um, so we'll do one. So starting from scratch, so I don't have any weird rotations or anything like that. What I want to do is, I personally think it's easier to have the animation mid-run. Okay, so one leg behind, put like just about to swing forwards, the other leg forwards, and just about to hit the ground. Make sure the uploads are okay. So the other foot about just about to hit the ground. Okay. Um, I'm doing a run, I guess. And then always the opposite leg, to, uh, sorry, opposite arm. So if this is forward, then um, this one's backward. So let's push this one forward. Backwards. Um, 
so I just one dot, right? Uh, you may remember, some of you may remember this from design practice in first year, it's almost the same concept. Except that instead of only looking from this angle, you now have to worry about this angle. So if I want it to be really fancy, I might have like, you know, uh, a little bit of a, oops, sorry, a little bit of a pelvis motion like that, because the leg is, the leg is aiming forwards, you know, so I can have a bit of a body twist as well. Uh, I might want to have like a chest rotate, so rotate my view. So rotate like that, for example. So it's um, this arm is swinging forwards, and then on this hip, on the other side, it'll swing backwards. You know. So it just depends what you want. Um, so maybe I'll just do that. I'll just do a little bit of a rotation. Just that. I I can rotate the hip a bit. Back. No, I'll leave the hip. So I don't want to make it too complicated. Um. So grand. That's lots. Copy that to the end frame, so I know it's going to start at this frame and end at that frame. I'm going to go to the middle, and in the middle, literally just do the opposite. So the upper body will be that instead. Backwards. Goes forwards. I'm kind of eyeballing this. Sometimes I even put like a finger on the screen to see. You can do it like perfectly by like checking the, the coordinate numbers here and like, uh, you know, like taking note of them, but like I will see. Generally eyeball it because um, a little bit of a perfection I actually think looks good. Make sure the up note is correct. And that one out. Just checking the, yeah, okay. So you see like the, the upper body is doing. Okay, cool. And arm goes backwards. Driver forwards. And then make sure the head is rotated the right way. So generally the head stays fixated on whichever direction you're running in. So it stays on target. Every time I make a change, I need to make sure I copy it to the end. Okay. And then in the middle, double click the pelvis again, lock everything. So that way any any keyframes I add in, in between won't affect this keyframe or that keyframe or that final keyframe. Right? They're all locked. Okay, so if I play it, it's going to look dumb, but it's basically the motions that I want. It just has no weight at the moment, and that's where the in-between pose is coming. So here, okay, so I just rotate it and move that down, the pelvis, okay, and it goes back up. That's cool. I can copy that now here. Just about one, two, three, four, five frames in between. One, two, three, four, five. Six, four, five. So the, the pelvis should be, and like you can see, it's already looking a lot better just by having that weight. The feet aren't doing what I want them to do yet, but the, at least the pelvis is working. If I want to, here's where I can start like adding, because this foot is impacting the ground, which means the pelvis should rotate like that way, you know? And similarly, that one should rotate the other way. And you see that's a much more natural motion um, and then I'll fix I'll fix like the upper chest now so again the upper chest yeah it does so boom like that and then upper chest as well so much better you check always check from like multiple angles looks fine from here looks okay from here I'm worrying about the major parts, like, you know, the, the, the pelvis first and the chest first. I worry about the other bits later. Okay, let's do the head. I think the head's actually fine. Yeah, the head's actually fine, so I can leave that. And the leg is the biggest one. So here, where, I, where my pelvis impacts at this point, that should be where my foot has just hit the ground, because it's just impacted the ground. Right? So let's move that down here. 
using my platform as an indicator to make sure I'm on level with the ground. So, perfect. And I might need to like tweak it so it still stays, you know. See? Okay. And then I'll do the op. I, I, I only care about the impact foot right now. I'll care about the, uh, the trading feet later. So again, here, impact happens there. So that's going to hit ground. And we'll take that feet. Okay, there. And then just make sure it doesn't trail too much. Perfect. Um, and then now we do the trading. The trading. So when this comes in, this trailing foot, I actually want that to lift a little bit because when you're running, you actually kind of lift your foot a bit and like trail your feet back so that, and then it snaps forwards, right? And I'll do the same for that. Right? So that trails a bit, so that should trail a little bit, stay a little bit behind, and the foot should rotate a little bit back up. And then now, if I press, oh, sorry, if you ever lose this, just press like Z, and zoom in. Now if I press play, Pretty good animation considering it should be like five minutes. Uh, maybe too much pelvis swing. Like it's a little bit too much of a sassy motion. So I'll go back in and like reduce that pelvis swing. Yeah, it's a little much. Let's try that. A bit better. Maybe the pelvis needs to go down a bit more. Or up a bit more, maybe. Yeah, I think it's so I need to like maybe the pelvis is higher. Is that better? Drop them up higher. That's better, right? No? He does dip a little low. Up and knees. Up and knees. And because I changed the first frame, remember I need to always pop it to the last frame. Because if I didn't, it would like snap. Because it's not, oops. It's not copying. So it's copying to the last frame. So it should. Something's a bit jerky. I think it's the upper body is a bit jerky. So sometimes if you have a problem and it's too jerky, you can like just delete those frames. Oh, it's actually, I don't actually need a, yeah, it's much smoother without those frames. Huh? Yeah, I think it's their, it's the up nose. So if I look at it from above, let's, let's give it one knee. That knee, oh, it shouldn't hit the ground like that. Go up sideways. Okay, that's better. Same with this one. So that swings forwards. It hits the ground. It should be down again. Let's see if that's better. Way better. So that's the problem with 3D. You kind of need to look at it from multiple different angles just to make sure it's okay in all the angles. Very interesting. Uh, if you are having problems, you can also like half half pace speed. Oh yeah, it's dipping more to this side than the other side. Yeah, definitely. So it's dipping more. When is the dip happening? Okay, it's dipping more to the right over here. Yeah, this is this one. Oh, that's no, no dip at all. Just looking at the pelvis first. I think the pelvis is okay. Yeah. You think it's the upper body. It's looking left a lot, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. 
Oh yeah. Go back to full speed. Okay. You're good. Okay, so that like is 101 to 130, so I'll need to remember that. Um, so what I'd like you to do for next week, um, have for me an animation for idle, animation for walk, and animation for jump, uh, which is like just one frame to jump. Um, like maybe you could loop like it's jumping and just like hopping. Uh, looping animation for fall, for falling down. I'll write this all in this word. And one frame impact. So just hitting the ground like one frame. And it will set it up immunity so it'll run around and animate. And do all, all that stuff. I'll write it down in Discord now.